What's up? So, you want to shoot drifting photos? Well, luckily it's pretty easy. All you need, full frame camera, fancy white lens with a red ring on it. And that's pretty much it. So, hope you enjoyed this video. See you. Yes, I'm just messing with you. You don't need all that, not yet. Now, before I go even further, let's talk about what drifting photography actually is. If you have a background in sports photography, that's cool. But drifting is a little bit different than other sports action photography. And here's why. Check out these non-drifting action sports, whatever photos that I've shot. And let me show you what they all have in common. One thing you'll see that they all have in common is they're frozen. There's no motion blur, there's no nothing. The action is completely frozen. And the reason for this is because with most sports, most action types of photography, when you're shooting a person, they're going all over the place. And by going all over the place, I mean their arms aren't going in the same direction as their body, which isn't going in the same direction as their legs, so on and so forth, even though they might be moving in the same relative direction. So that means that you need to use a faster shutter speed to freeze them to get the action. If you try to use a slow shutter speed, you're gonna have a blurry mess. You might have the body in focus, but the arms are gonna be blurred out. This is true even with something as basic as someone riding by on a bike. Let's take this video for instance. At first look, you know, why can't you use a slow shutter speed? Why can't you pan with the subject? Well, you're gonna have blurry feet, the body's kind of moving all over the place, so it's, it's gonna be a mess. And then if you add something that's actually you know, worth shooting, this presents even more problems. The front wheel is going in a different direction as the back wheel, the bike frame is rotating, the body is going straight up and not rotating. Really, there's only one point where you can pan with this or use a slow shutter speed, and that's at the very peak of the jump for a very small fraction of a second. Otherwise, you're gonna have one blurry mess. Really, the only way you can have a nice slow shutter speed photo with someone doing something as basic as going by on a bike is to let them know, hey, don't move. And they ride by, and their body is completely still, and there you go. Now with drifting, the entirety of the car that you can see on the outside is going in the same linear direction. This is why drifting is great for shooting with slow shutter speeds to get all kinds of motion blur in the background. Instead of freezing the action, you wanna highlight the motion. And by doing this, you can use a nice slow shutter speed, pan with the car, and get the blurred background. That's gonna add tons of speed, tons of action, and tons of I guess excitement to the photo. This is why drifting is a little bit different than other kinds of sports photography. Yes, you can do that with, you know, someone hopping down some steps on a bike or a skateboard or running past, but you need a flash and you need, you know, a whole setup and it's a bit more involved than drifting or a car going by. Going back to the gear that you need, and not one of these, or one of these, unless you want to shoot like a dozen rolls of film and have five usable shots. Fun to use, but, um, yeah, autofocus is good to have. So then, these, right? Ideally, yeah, but no, not yet. All you need, if you don't already have camera gear, is a low to mid-range DSLR, one that can shoot in manual mode, give you those shutter controls, has decent autofocus, and ideally can let you shoot in RAW, but if not, that's not a deal breaker. And then a lens that can reach around one to 200 millimeters, because on most tracks, especially if you don't have a media pass, you're not going to be able to get very close to the action. So you want a lens that can reach far, as far as what it can see. And a kit lens, you know, 16 to 55 or whatever comes with your camera, probably isn't going to be the job, even with a crop sensor camera. You'll have, you know, this huge frame, the car's going to be this big in it, and you crop in on it, and you're going to lose a lot of detail. So don't go throwing a bunch of money on like the nicest full frame camera you can find or some crazy $1,500 lens. You don't need that. I started out with this, KISS X4, or in the States, this would be the T2i. And uh, this lens, I got this at a thrift store in Japan for like 35 bucks. And uh, yeah, I shot with this for a few years, uh, even get hired to cover events and do other photo jobs based on photos from this camera. And this isn't anything special, I mean, it's a T2i. And even when it's brand new, I mean, this is not a high-end camera at all. My girlfriend has used this as recently as last year as my second shooter, and her photos are pretty awesome. Now, when it comes to camera settings, as far as what ISO, aperture, and shutter speed are, those are the three things that you really need to focus on, and there's tons of videos online about that, so I'm not gonna get into that. I'll link something in the description. The most important setting 
is gonna be shutter speed. Yes, ISO and aperture are important, but shutter speed is what's really gonna make your photo stand out. So shutter speed, most important. ISO, slap that thing at 100 and don't even think about it. Use your aperture settings to make the photos brighter or darker. You know, if it's getting too bright, go to F7, F11, wherever you need to go, as long as your shutter speed is where you want it to be. Don't use that to adjust brightness and darkness, unless you absolutely have to. Now, I know I'm focusing a lot on slow shutter speeds, tons of motion blur and all that fun stuff. You don't always have to do that. Sometimes it is cool to kind of freeze the motion and focus on like some cottony, you know, clouds of smoke. And that's cool. I'm not gonna focus on that right now because that's really easy. I'm not saying that those photos don't take skill. I mean, they're a lot easier to shoot as in you shoot with a really high shutter speed and as long as your focus is good, you're pretty good. Shooting at a slow shutter speed takes a little bit more practice and it's just overall a little bit harder, but it looks really cool. Now a good shutter speed that I try to shoot for is somewhere around 125th of a second and slower. Now the reason I go for 125th of a second or slower is because I found that at 125th of a second, no matter how slow the track is or how fast it is, you're always gonna get some kind of motion blur. If the car is flying by like this and you're panning with it, the background's gonna have a bit of blur to it. The car's coming towards you, going away from you, you're gonna have some motion blur on the wheels when they're spinning. And then when you go lower, it's just gonna to add to it, add more speed, more action, and all that fun stuff. Now, when you're shooting that low, that means that you need to follow the car perfectly. You need to pan with it. The car's going past, you need to follow that car perfectly for at least 125th of a second if you're shooting at that. If you're shooting at 150th of a second, that means that for a time span of 150th of a second, you need to be perfectly in sync with that car as it goes by. You can't be going in different directions, you can't be going a little bit slower, a little bit faster. You have to be perfectly in sync. This is why it's a little bit difficult when shooting at slower shutter speeds. You need to be able to pan. Now that also requires accepting that you're gonna lose a lot of photos. That's the trade-off. Now if you shoot at 1 20th of a second, you might shoot 200 photos and have five usable ones. But those five usable photos are gonna look awesome. They're gonna look amazing. So the trade-off of losing a lot of your photos is that the photos that you do get are gonna look crazy. Now if I cover an event, and at the end of the day I can use half of my photos, that's doing really well. Usually I expect to have maybe one third of my photos even be usable. And then from that one third, I'm gonna whittle those down even smaller to the photos that I really like or that really are just awesome. And those are gonna be the ones that I use. It's just like any Ken Block or skateboarding or BMX video where you see someone do a crazy line or just a one crazy trick. You see that cool trick and that cool line and like, man, that looks awesome. What you don't see is the 20 tries it took them to get there. They're doing this line that's five tricks in it. They messed up on each one of those tricks a few times. You don't see all those attempts. All you see is one time they got it right. That's the same with these photos. You put up a gallery from an event and you have like 75 photos. People are gonna see 75 really awesome photos. They're not gonna know that you had like 300 other photos and it took you those many photos to get down to that 75. But you're gonna have 75 awesome photos. Now it can be frustrating because you'll think that you followed a car perfectly and then you review the image and it looks good on your camera and you put it on your computer and it's like, eh, it's a little soft. It sucks, but that's just the nature of the game. It's really easy to get sucked into just shooting at a really fast shutter speed where every photo is in focus and every photo is just usable and then you have this gallery of like 500 photos, but you're gonna have a lot of cars parked on track, which sometimes looks okay, but generally it's gonna lack that motion. Now it doesn't mean that you can't do that. There's some really awesome looking photos out there of a car sliding where everything is still and it's an amazing photo. But motion blur, wheel spinning, it's gonna add a ton to your photos. Now I'm gonna make a more in-depth video about panning and a bunch of other things like focus points, more camera settings and composition and all that fun stuff. But for now we're gonna focus just on shutter speeds and the basics of panning because knowing at least a little bit of the basics behind panning is gonna go a long way. I'm gonna show you with this because it doesn't weigh like five million pounds. When you're panning, you wanna pan with your whole body, your legs and your waist. Your upper body should stay still like a statue. Don't pan with your head. Don't pan with your arms. Don't pivot the camera, all that stuff. You're gonna get a lot smoother motion like that. Also, don't use a tripod don't use a monopod. 
you're gonna thank yourself later on down the road. Yes, they can help, but they can hinder you in the long run, especially when you're starting out. A monopod or a tripod is gonna limit your motion to left and right, not really up and down, or it's gonna pivot like that. Also, if you're not using a monopod or a tripod, you might think, well, let's get the lightest camera setup I can find. That's also not the greatest thing in the world. Heavier weight is not gonna wanna do this as much. That's gonna have momentum that's gonna wanna keep it going in this direction. Also, if you're in the right position and you're moving the right way, you're not gonna have much of this anyway. Do what? Oh, you don't have image stabilization on your lens. Oh no, well guess what? I don't either. This one doesn't. I think this lens for 35 bucks is gonna have it. Neither does this one. There'd be more buttons if it did. You don't need image stabilization. Yes, it helps, but not having it helps you really refine those motor controls, those movements. It really helps in the long run so that if you ever do end up getting that, if you don't shoot with an icon where it does it in the body already, then later on, once you do have that, it's gonna be so much better. I've never used image stabilization with my photos. And I think that's what helps me get really smooth videos also. Yeah, the video camera I use, my Sony has some crazy stabilization in it, but still, I shoot completely handheld all my videos. I don't use a tripod. I think that comes from not using image stabilization and just being able to refine those motor skills. The long run is what you should be focusing on. I'm gonna get into filters more in depth later on down the road, but one filter that you should look to have right now, if not in the near future, is a circular polarizer. This will get rid of all those reflections on the windshields and on the cars in general, so you have those clear windows that make a huge difference in your photos. So, don't shell out $3,000 for crazy camera body and for a crazy lens, you don't need that. Low end to mid range DSLR, and pair that with a lens that can hit you know, around one to 200 millimeters and you'll be golden. No tripod, no monopod. Focus on your shutter speed, try to get down to 125th of a second or slower and learn how to pan. Just getting those basics down is gonna be the foundation of going forward. Like I said, I'm gonna go more in depth in all this stuff later on, but for now, you know what you need to focus on. So go to an event, have some fun and practice. Don't try to get a media pass, don't try to do this and that, just go take your camera and shoot and see what you come up with and just keep practicing at it and you'll be good. Fun stuff. Mm -hmm.